On today's episode, we touch on foreplay, ruining your already ruined life, and why your vagina doesn't make you rude. All that and more on today's episode of Bad Advice with Lori Beth Denberg. Help me out, almighty Lori Beth Denberg. Give me that vital information so I get the right thoughts. Who do you yeah. The church of Lori Beth is in session and we're reading from the scriptures of vital information. Like, oh my God, I said, my Savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. Oh my God, I said, my Savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. Oh, 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 oh. This is Lori Beth Denberg, and welcome to the Bad Advice Podcast. Woo. With me, as always, is Woo Clark Roger. Hello. Hello, Clark. How are you? I am doing okay. Yeah? I have been fully vaccinated. Oh, welcome. Welcome <laughs> to the club. Um, and I do want to say, we've talked a lot. I mean, we're talking about what's going on in our lives from a week to week to week to week basis. Right. And this 23, has been- 23 weeks in. 20, <laughs> exactly. 23 and me. I'm seeing how I am related to every other podcast. Um, so, yeah. So this is, you know, my second turn at the- uh, in the batting cage, and yeah. I got stuck, and I am relieved and happy. I had Are you Pfizer. Sore? Are you sore? I am not sore anymore. This was a few days ago. Okay. So I did. I did have a sore arm. Right. It kind of felt like you know when you get a mosquito bite that gets really big, right? And then the middle part is kind of like hardish and yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it felt like. Okay. That's what it felt on like. On the exact spot. Yeah. Where, where uh, was it an inoculation or a mosquito bite? Maybe I'm not. <laughs> Maybe I'm not. Maybe in- a mosquito uh, vaccinated you. Well, or I'm not vaccinated against COVID, <laughs> but I now have malaria. <laughs> so win win, I there guess. Um, that was my only real side effect okay. or whatever. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah. tired on Sunday and kind of passed out and slept. Sure. But I was also up till 5 a.m. <laughs> so it makes sense that you Saturday be tired. night, Sunday morning. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't have a great sleep schedule that I keep yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, kind of a mess. All but, right. you know, other than that, I didn't feel ill. I didn't feel any of that stuff. Good. I'm relieved. I'm still within the two weeks right. of, you know, where apparently it takes full, you know, over my body and right, like yeah. in, under my veins, like the people in Stranger Things, yeah, they it's get slowly taking over your DNA. Exactly, like the chip is in place, but it hasn't clicked on to <laughs> right. to access the satellite. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so Bill oh, Gates is aware of me, but we are rivals because your team uh, Pfizer. I'm team Pfizer. Your team, team Moderna. Moderna. But I was just thinking that in the long term, we will find out the difference between. Between Team Pfizer and Team Moderna, because when the chips are activated and we're turned into mindless slaves, right. I think Moderna's will be underground in the pits mining for things. Uh, whoa, okay. And Pfizer's will be on the surface growing crops to uh, feed the wealthy families and make them money. Where's Johnson and Johnson? Johnson and Johnson. Underwater? They're in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know why, but they're in the kitchen. Wait, they're get they get to be in the kitchen, but I have to live underground from now on. Because Moderna was like hulky. It's true. So you need your big and you'll just like <laughs> dig at it with your hands into the rock. Um, yeah, I can see that so, happening. Yeah, when that wills out and the chips take their full effect. Yeah. I think we'll that's we'll all know. That's it'll be like don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. Right. That's why you're on the soil and I'm underground. Exactly. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. To see how that works out. I like that. That's going to yeah. be uh, a fun thing to look forward to. No, but also I've been distracted oh? from life. Oh, because I like this guy. Oh. He's a man. I'm 45. Yeah, he's yeah, a man. Yeah. He's a man. Um, and he's a man anyway, I suppose. <laughs> so like, Am I a teenager or a normal person living in this age that I'm like, let me just check his Facebook again. Oh, let me just Facebook check his stalking? Facebook again. Am I? 
Are you? I'm Am asking I? you. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> He's just cute. So there's nothing look? wrong with looking at pictures. You're not going to every picture and like harding it, are you? No, I'm not. And you know what? I've had an, uh, some issues with that. Yeah. As me posting. Yeah, sure, that sure. There are some people that post and comment on every single thing yeah. to the point where it's a little, a little creepy. It's it's a, it's too much. Yeah. And I kind of keep my eye on it. Yeah. 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 But, um, I don't know. I, well, there's nothing wrong with just looking at somebody on Facebook. Okay. And it's not LinkedIn. So they will never know that you were looking at their site. And by so. the way, if we've never met, it's not you. So yeah. don't worry about it. <laughs> And if you are out there and you know who I'm talking to, either just give me a heads up, like thumbs up or restraining order. Either way. <laughs> One of the two. Show of solidarity. Yeah. If you're out there, if you have questions about this kind of thing, Facebook stalking, if you have your, I'm, I'm just saying, oh, I'm a Facebook stalker. Like, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. Not I at all. I don't think that's true. I'm pretty nice. I'm Not pretty harmless. All. Absolutely. So, so far. <laughs> um, where is your love? <laughs> um, um, I'll get my Moderna friends to pull down your house brick <laughs> by fucking brick. From the underneath. From we're, un exactly. we're under the ground. Yeah, it'll yeah. just come up like a fucking... Your house hurt. will just crumble into the earth. It's an underground hurricane that just funnels <laughs> up. Just sucks all your shit in there. I'm sorry we should have dated. <laughs> um, dear listeners, send in questions about this. Because then I can compare your situations to mine. Yeah, 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 send yeah. Send in your experiences even. I, I think what Lori Beth is asking for uh, is a little bad advice from uh, our audience. Yeah, give me some bad advice. Yeah, come on. That'd be fun. You, you could uh, have your own bad advice from the viewers. Exactly. That'd be pretty cool. I like it. Well, um, until we get those, why don't we stick to the questions of the day? Are okay. You, are you ready for some questions? Yes, I am. All right, here we go. Question number one is actually, I'm excited to say, a phone call question. Oh, yummy. I love phone call questions. That means less for me to read. All right, here we go. This is from uh, a listener named Trina. Hi, Lori Beth and Clark. My name is Trina. I'm from Vermont. And I am having trouble navigating the workplace with people who don't share the same ideals as me. One example is I placed a daughter for adoption at birth with a couple of very fine gentlemen from Washington, D.C. And one coworker told me that she thought that was wrong and that shouldn't be allowed because she will never have a mother. To which I obviously said, she does have a mother. I mean, hello. But also, it's become like more crazy and oh, I don't I just don't know that's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part of the call <laughs> thank you Trina first of all and Clark knows this I don't know that I do it so much on the podcast here but I am known for just making noises oh yeah absolutely and I'm I'm very uh onomatopoetic not even so. It's not. I'm not like. Juk, 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 but I'm. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know. That was a machine gun slash uh, slot machine paying off. <laughs> yes. um, no, but when you say like, I just know exactly what you mean. Sure, sure, I sure. know exactly what you mean. Right. So thank you very much for calling in. Um, I don't. I, 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 this isn't how I think you should respond to anybody, but my first thing that you should feel very comfortable at least knowing and thinking and saying to anyone else is, hey, coworker, shut your fucking mouth, you <laughs> fucking idiot cunt. <laughs> Who asked you? Not me. And also fuck off. <laughs> I, I don't know if HR is going to love that advice, but. Well, that's why I said this is we're working toward. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting yeah, there. We're, this is where we're starting from. Yeah. And you're the second. Um, the second so far 
person that's, you know, called us and told us about their experience giving a baby up for adoption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, oh, and we had that call, Clark, about um, potato and chip. Right. And how they were going to... Um, uh, deal react with the to new the to the new foster kids. Foster kids. So, um, Elena, I believe her name was, did send me some pictures of potato and chip. I'll oh, show you later. Awesome. So, shout out to the follow up fans. <laughs> um, but Trina, first of all, I don't know what kind of office you work in. Yeah, is it corporate? Is it a small staff? Right. Like whatever it is. If we've if we've learned anything over the last five years, right? It's that. We are going to deal with very polarizing opinions. Yeah. I think that that has been a real kind of through line of a lot of people over the last four years, five years. How do I even coexist with someone that who's on this different of a plane than me? Exactly. Or even worse, hates me. Yeah, exactly. And it's just that's been kind of remarkable yeah and this person i wouldn't share any more about your life with this person yeah seriously um she's like oh you gave up your baby i bet you didn't even get her an nra <laughs> membership, membership. <laughs> if you don't start young they won't know like i don't know i'm just guessing that you're on the more liberal side since you adopted your baby out to a lovely gay couple yeah um, which I think is super groovy and yeah. awesome and all of that junk that anyone who's listened to this podcast would clearly would know, clearly know that I would think, Yep. but, um, yeah, if this is somebody who's coming up to you and bringing this up, you know, and it could have been really casual, like, oh yeah, no, I had a baby and she lives with. You know, I put her up for adoption and she lives with this great gay couple and right. she was like, er, record scratch. Yeah, exactly. And got out her cross and her Chick-fil-A coupons and told you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how bad you are. Yeah. Um, a, I have a feeling that this isn't someone you were besties to start with. Right. You know, I yeah. have a feeling that this could have been a work acquaintance or it's uh, someone or, you I know, would certainly hope this isn't the person that uh, Trina has to go out and eat lunch with every day. Uh, you're right. This isn't someone you have to go out to lunch with. Yeah. yeah you yeah. never have to go out to lunch with anybody <laughs> that, that you work with. <laughs> um, you know, you don't have to have coffee. You don't have you might get them in the secret Santa. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> right. Buy him, buy him like some really progressive books <laughs> and um, and they'll buy you just whatever. Yeah, exactly. A, a ticket a, to a, heaven. A new, uh, uh, what do you call it? A rebel flag. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God, the Confederate flag. Confederate flag. Yeah, and, and you know, she's not saying that this person is a yuck face yeah. to that degree. Yeah. But, I mean. Well, they're, they're people that sh that don't share the same ideals as her. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't mean that they're horrible people. They just don't share the same ideals. Exactly. Ideals are one thing. Yeah. You've brought up a very specific, close, important, yeah. seminal point in your life. And it does not need to semen over anyone else. It's yeah. seminal only for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if this person keeps bringing it up, I mean, you can do that, you know, uh, I appreciate how you feel, but these are my decisions and I don't want to speak about this anymore. My problem with that is it like gives that person too much credit. Yeah, I would almost suggest talking to HR. Yeah. Almost going to HR and saying, you know, she she keeps harping on this. If, yeah. If this is if she, this is a, a recurring yes. problem. If it happened once. Great. You, and maybe you never that was just the example yeah. of a shift in ideals between coworkers. Right. So otherwise, I think you're right. Just stop talking. Yeah. Let's not open up to that person anymore. They yeah. get they get top level information only. <laughs> you're on a need to know basis. Exactly. I got my period. <laughs> I want to let you know since you're interested in my reproductive systems. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Go the opposite route. Just give them every dirty little information yeah, exactly. about you. <laughs> Tell them, oh, my God, I had this anal fissure last night. Oh. It was horrible. I was crying. I'll pray for you. <laughs> you know, but in the end, it's your job. 
and job and life are there's life and there's work. That's what uh, <laughs> da, uh, Tom DeLuise, Don Draper, said. Don Draper, you know, Don DeLuise, Don, Don Draper. DeLuise. There's tomato, life, tomato. There's life and there's work. Um, <laughs> Dom DeLuise is more like there's life and there's pasta sauce. <laughs> uh, for everyone who's listening, look up Dom DeLuise because <laughs> yeah. you're all of our 90 year olds are going to be laughing yes. hilariously. Every 90s kid's dad is <laughs> loving this right now. And I'm sure every 90s kid's dad has also been loving all of my anecdotes about sex toys. Yeah, sure. So shout out to all the dads out there. All right. Um, does your dad listen? I don't think so. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't think so. I'll be able to look him in the eye. <laughs> oh, Norm, you wonderful, magnificent son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm more curious whether Nanny is listening. Nanny is drunk off her ass and listening. She's loaded a bong. <laughs> Nanny has a secret life you don't know about. I would love that. I'm, I'm telling you, I have a feeling. <laughs> if not, I'm going to set her up with one. Okay. But, oh, Trina, by the way. Yes, hi. yes, yeah. Um, it doesn't sound like you don't like your job. Right. It sounds like you just have this thing. And, you know, it sucks. It'd be lovely to go into work and be like, I'm open and we're all a team and this and that. But that's not how life works a yeah. lot of the time. Yeah. That's how it can work with your friends. Yeah. It's not always how it works with your family, mm -hmm. but you know, you have your safe places where, you know, you know, me, I know you, we're not judging. We're on the same, you know, path as far as like our ideals, our politics our whatever. Right. And, but work is not that place. Yeah. Work is, you know, even if we love our jobs, there's plenty of people that love their jobs. Absolutely. Hopefully you're going to your job to make money, to pay your rent, to whatever. If you love your job, that's like an amazing bonus stroke of luck yeah. to, uh, to a lot of, uh, uh, to a, some degree. Yeah. Um, Cause there are also people that work really hard to be able to do yes. what they love. It's not just like, Oh, I lucked into it. Exactly. Um, But yeah, you don't owe anybody anything about your personal life. Yeah. And it is completely up to you whether or not you hear a conversation going on about, you know, something that strikes your ire that's against what you think and you decide to speak up or get involved in the conversation. You know, part of that is your it's your choice to do that. And yeah. part of that is, do I want to be in the conversation? But a bigger part to me is that question of. Do I even want to bother giving a minute of my life to this? Right. And it's hard because we're all so, no matter what position we're in, we're all so self-righteous. Right. And I just need you to understand. <laughs> I, I probably said this on the show, but it's like I, I learned a long time ago and this really helped that you can't. Uh, you can't convince an asshole they're an asshole yeah. because they're already an asshole. Right. So at some point. <sighs> I just don't bother because it's not worth it. Well, plus you also have to add into their assholes don't care that they're assholes. That's why they're assholes. But they believe what they're saying it's... so much. Sure, sure. Like I have friends, I have Facebook friends. Shout out to Mary from Chats with Hi, <laughs> who like will actively argue with people on Facebook. Yeah, 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 And yeah. I just, I don't do that. I mean, yeah. mostly it's a lot of fans and friends. I'm not going to be like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> right. You know. Thanks um, for watching. Yeah, exactly. This is a Facebook page <laughs> and you're deleted. Um, but I don't engage in that. I don't go into like groups that really have any sort of animosity or whatever. Yeah. And I'll even watch like some of the, some of the videos that we've done. I'll be helped you waste your life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'll just look into the comments and just be like, Oh, what, how did this come up? Yeah. And a lot of it is trolls yeah. stirring shit up. Yeah. But some of it is, is apropos to, you know, what the video was right. or whatever. And it's just kind of like, Man alive, how desperate are you for some human interaction yeah. that this is how you're going about it yeah. or just that you want to stir up shit, you know? It's honestly just the worst case scenario. Yeah. Every single comment section 
is just a worst case scenario. Oh, of it's just what's a, the worst thing you could think about when you watch this video? Yeah, or it's a listen train to this. wreck. Yeah, exactly. So Trina, Trina, pretend your workplace is the comment section of a Facebook video. <laughs> there you go. And you decide what you want to respond to. Absolutely. You can give, I mean, I would even go so far as to just give a thumbs up to something you like. Yeah. Do the little two-handed heart. <laughs> like make yeah. a little heart out of your hands if right. it's something you love. Yeah. And if it's someone saying uh, gay should not be able to have children, then you can walk on by. Yeah. Then you can walk on by. Yeah. It, it's it, if, if this is something that's happening in your regular real life outside of a workplace, yeah, you need to stand up and defend your actions. And and if you want to tell somebody to fuck off because they don't think it's right that you let your kid uh, go to a, a gay couple, well, you can tell them to fuck right off. Yeah. Right. But if it's in the workplace, you can't fight you just can't it unless just, you don't care about the job and you yeah. just go out in a fucking blaze of glory exactly just walk away from the explosion wolverine style <laughs> and exactly. just let it burn that's exactly right but i think even beyond the past five years forever as long as there's been offices if you work in an office there is at least two or three people that you cannot stand yeah it's just it's just how an office works. There are people there that of all shapes and sizes, of all mm -hmm. creeds and colors, of all everything. And eventually you're going to find somebody that kind of pisses you off. Yeah. That kind of has an attitude that doesn't, you know, jive with yours. And you're going to have to deal with it the same way you're dealing with this dummy. Yeah. You kind of just got to ignore them. And move on. Yeah. Although so. we're in Clark's office and there's only three of us here. <laughs> it's just Baggy. Clark. Yeah. Clark, Bags, and me. So if there's always two or three people in every <laughs> office that you can't stand. Well, I would say office space, not an actual in-home office. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. I was worried that we were leading up to a bigger conversation. <laughs> no, 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 no. Baggy, no. we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> so Trina, first of all, I, you're choices are awesome yeah in my opinion yes you know knowing that giving the baby up for adoption is the right thing to do for the baby and for you and it sounds like she might still have a, li a little bit of a relationship with exactly her. It's like exactly you're doing fa one you're making wonderful choices uh, Trina. yes call uh, sending us a question come on that was a great choice you are on the ball <laughs> Tarina. <laughs> you're grand Tarina. <laughs> Um, which is a movie I think about a horrible old man who kills people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she's better than that. Yeah, she's way better than that. She's venti, <laughs> Tarina. <laughs> oh, oh, what happened to this Starbucks question? Starbucks jokes. This thank you, pretty, thank pretty you, amazing. thank you for your question. Yeah, that was really good. Hey, thank you, Trina. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's move on to our next question, and this is from God. This this name just drives my brain crazy. Real Enortainer says. Can really great foreplay be enough to satisfy? Oh, well, if you're a real entertainer, you Enort should know. <laughs> uh, thanks for your question. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If the idea of sex, if on the one hand is to procreate mm -hmm. and make a baby, mm -hmm. then uh, no, that... You know, foreplay will not satisfy that end goal. Right. But if the... Fortunately, we aren't all just duplicating robots. I know. Well, they're going to need a new a new Moderna army when this one wears out. <laughs> it's true. So get going. <laughs> uh, but if the idea is to have a good time and feel pleasure and orgasm and give your partner pleasure then yeah foreplay can definitely be enough mm -hmm. definitely definitely yeah um i feel like now on every show there comes the point where i have a question where i have to stress the corona safety things <laughs> yes. and a question where i have to bring up sex toys it's true <laughs> um yeah whatever you like whatever your partner likes whatever works mm -hmm. is what 
works. Yeah. Something works. Something works. Yeah. And that you need to talk to your partner. Mm-hmm. You know, there's plenty of women who don't come from just, you know, vaginal penetration. Right. Or what we might call fucking. Right. Um, <laughs> that's the what science. the layman's call. The, yeah, the layman's. <laughs> the peasants. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's where hands and mouths and tongues and handcuffs and yeah. all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff comes into play mm-hmm. but that just involves really getting to know your partner what do you like what turns you on That's right. what are we after here mm-hmm. you know it's like foreplay doesn't have to be just foreplay yeah. it could be the play yeah so that is um, definitely a big yes to that question. Mm-hmm. Again, if you're trying to have a baby and it's not working and it's because you're only doing oral, that's where you're going wrong. That's right. Not to not this question, but for <laughs> anyone else listening, that's not where it's going. Yeah. yeah. Um, so absolutely talk to your partner. Get get the toys, I guess. Not yeah. everyone needs toys, I uh, suppose. It's true. Uh, it just really helps me out a lot. <laughs> um, and I've used them with partners, too. Yeah, of course. really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, foreplay can definitely be enough. Just make sure you know what, what your partner wants, what you want. Yeah. And then play. Now, I'm sure there are probably some people out there that foreplay isn't enough. For them. Oh, yeah. However, that's a their problem. That's that's not a group problem. You know what I'm saying? That's not that shouldn't be a couple problem. If there's a couple, we should all the couples always should be willing to want the other couple's happiness oh, yeah. above their own. Yes. And therefore, you're always wanting to make sure that you're happy. Right. Yeah. So it's like if that's all your partner wants this time. That should be enough for you, too. That's a really good point, because I was speaking just to this uh, question from Real Entertainer. An Entertainer. And, um, you know, the question of, can that be enough? Right. Um, But I don't mean to imply that, you know, for some people, it isn't enough. For some people, the actual penetration, sex to the sex sex is what gets them off or what they need or what they want. Right. So... Whatever works, whatever yeah. works for you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, really, all you really need to know is uh, uh, sex is fun. And if you're not having fun when you're having sex, there's something wrong. With you. Exactly. Because that's the whole fucking point. It is. I mean, babies, yeah, babies too. But it's just fucking fun. Oh, I'm so glad you I, I caught what you were saying because I thought you were saying that babies should have fun when they're having sex. Oh, no. And no. I was really like and I knew you wouldn't mean that. No. But I was really trying to dig in my brain for what you meant. Yes. Babies is another reason to have sex. Yes. But I, I understand. And we're still good. Even if you're trying to have a baby, if you're having sex and it's not fun, that's going to be end up being a very unhappy baby. I, exactly. <laughs> I just can't wait to dump my load in you so I can get out of here and go to the garage. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus, you bitch. Oh, that's horrible. I know. What a horrible <laughs> note to end on. Okay, wait, hold on. Okay, wait. Talk to your partner. Find out what they like. Be honest about what you like and have a great time. Yay. And re-spell your name because that is breaking my brain. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question is from uh, a young lady named Shannon. Oh. And Shannon says, hi. My confidence is in the gutter, especially at work. Do you have advice for a young woman to be more confident and assertive in the workplace? And then in parentheses, office jobs without coming across as rude. Ugh, thank you, Shannon. Yeah. I'm not I'm not ugging your question. I'm ugging the situation that I know all too well. Yeah. You know, it has been this, you know, huge cliche. It's a cliche for a reason. Yeah since the eighties or beyond back in time that an assertive man is assertive and an assertive woman is a bitch. Right. And I fight against that. I don't fight against that. Let me be clear. I find myself tempering what I say. Right. A lot. Right. And part of it is a lot of times 
I feel like I'm seeing a bigger picture than the other person. Mm -hmm. So I go, okay, this just came up with me. Like this condescending kind of know-it-all, right. way less experience than me. Right. Um, and I'm sitting back going, okay, I know where this person is coming from. I'll, I'll temper what I'm saying because I'm trying to get the project done. Right. So I'm looking at it bigger picture, stepping back. Right. But then... I fucking chew on it and I'm angry and I'm planning what I want to say when it comes up again. Yeah. So that's, and it may never come up again. So that's a great use of my time and my teeth <laughs> right. grinding. Um, uh, the dentist is like, why is there one eighth of your tooth gone? <laughs> well, I didn't say something to this one guy. And then I thought about it for 10 years. Um, the first thing I would say is, you know what your job is. Go in and do it. Yeah. Go in and do your job yep. unapologetically. Yeah. If you need help, um, ask for it. Yeah. Not, I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't know what to do. Like we, women have this real tendency. And when I say women, I mean me, but mm. I know it's not just me. A lot of times to come in like, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I don't. I don't want to, you know, bother you, but I have a question about this. And right. it's this real secondary, I need help from a big man. Right. Most of that time, a lot of that time, it's because we know the big man needs us to be that way. Right. I need this information. I need to do my job. <clears throat> I get, you know, I get condescended to, I get the attitude, all that stuff that we know exists. I'm not breaking new ground yeah, with this yeah, oration. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I've tried to do is really go in, do my job, say this is how I'm doing my job, and just hold firm. That doesn't mean that... Everything I have to say is intractable. I don't know everything. I don't know every aspect of every job I'm right, doing, right. whether it's an office job, whether it's a production. Just like anybody. Nobody knows exactly what they're doing when they're first starting into an mm. office set. Oh, no, I'm setting. saying like, even if you've been there 10 years, you're working on a big project. Right. There's you don't new know stuff. if there's 10 people, you don't know what all 10 people are doing. Right. So there's going to be things I don't know. Absolutely. So I can ask a question. But I've I've really learned to not do that shrinking like, I'm really sorry to bother right. you. I'm really sorry to bother you. What? You know, right. you have this job. They pay you for this job. Yeah. You do this job. Absolutely. And you do this job the best you can do it. Yeah. And if you're doing it the best, you don't care if somebody's going to get upset at you because who cares? You're doing the job. Yeah. Also, I want to bring up, too, before we get too deep into this. That if anyone out there doesn't listen all the time or uh, doesn't really know this, you have worked several office jobs in the years, you know, since Steve Harvey and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what you're talking about. It's not like you're just guesstimating about what an office is yeah. or comparing it to working on a on a film set or a TV set. The, you have lots of in-office experience to, yes. to know exactly what Shannon's pain is. Exactly. And... We have come to the point where, you know, and it's like, thanks. It's always awful. Like, thanks to hashtag me too. Right. You know, which is like, yes, thanks to that. But what a horrible, you know, how far down the hole did things have to get before we're like, oh, let's uh, pretend to be human all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, there are things in life to apologize for. Right. Hurting someone unintentionally or intentionally. Yep backstabbing someone, whatever. Yeah. To go in, do your job and hold your head up. is not something to fucking apologize for. And that has taken me years yep. to, to understand and accept and put into practice. Yeah. So did we, what's the rest of her question? Did we that, cover it all? Yeah, that was really it. Just without coming across as rude. <laughs> Shannon, that was kind of to what, you know, I just said. We, as women, have been taught that saying anything is rude. Right. That saying anything is out of place. Right. And that is where we need to make a distinction in our behavior 
you know if you're being rude. Right. You know if you're asking a question, if you being assertive or just not cowering is considered rude. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. And if that's a problem and there's an HR, take it there. If that's a problem and there's a fucking lawyer, take it there. Yeah. But. You know, being standing on your two feet, having confidence and pride in what you do and doing the job you need to do does not make you rude. Being perceived in a way that you're not intending could be because of how I'm doing it. Right. How I'm putting something across or Or, because the other guy has a tiny dick and can't stand being looked in the eye by a woman. Exactly. Or a woman. It could be another woman. Exactly. And that's the person that I feel like. Uh, Shannon is really kind of talking about here. Yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, thank you so much, Shannon. But now I think it's about that time that we move on to our rotating segment of the week. And I'm very excited because this week is <gasps> a Clark's Corner. Really bitch about Star Wars or obsess about She Hulk? We'll find out on Clark's Corner. Yeah. Always very excited. I have zero idea what's coming. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, I love my little Clark's Corner. Uh, the past few uh, Clark's Corners, I've talked about uh, projects mm-hmm. that I thought were really fun that they should make into a TV show. I talked about Quantum Leap. Yes. I talked about, uh, anyway, uh, this idea is very similar, but I have not, this is my Quantum Leap idea I've had for years. Okay. My uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles idea uh, I've had for years, you know, so this is the first idea. That's really, I've only had this for a couple of weeks. So I really, I I need your input. Like I really would like, it's not fleshed out. This is a very basic idea. I have plenty of flesh to offer. (laughs) So here we go. This is kind of all based on, I'm not trying to do a uh, Clark helps you waste your life. Okay. There is a YouTuber that I really love. His name is Quinton and his channel is called Quinton's Reviews and, or just Quinton Reviews. And uh, he basically, he analyzes the history of the internet and with like little pop culture videos and then also specifically YouTubers. Okay. Like he's like a history of the YouTubers and he's analyzing. He's really smart, hmm. younger than us, but not by a lot. Okay. Really good guy. I really like watching these videos, but he has easily out of his hundreds of videos that he's made over the past five years, he has easily six or seven about Garfield. <gasps> Oh, and I know how much you love Garfield. Garfield were the books that I would buy from like the book mobile. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So uh, he has easily six or seven Garfield videos. He talks about the movies. He talks about he talks about the scary ones. Yeah, he does. Um, But he made a video that's uh, about Heathcliff. That's called (laughs) Garfield, but worse. (laughs) You'd really like this guy. He has a lot of really fun stuff. But the one that inspired me for this, uh, for my Clark's Corner, uh, is called How Garfield Lost His Magic. Oh. And it really is, he's talking about how the original comic strip of Garfield wasn't really about Garfield. Mm -hmm. The original comic strip is more about John Arbuckle. Yeah. It's more about the guy. Garfield just kind of provides all of the best punchlines. Yes. Right? He's the one that has the quips and says the funny lines. But the the strip itself is more about John and how he can't date and yeah. how he's so lonely and how he's horrible If only his he job. could have met Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, the interesting thing that I loved about this video is that according to this guy, Quentin, Garfield has never been accurately translated from the comic because Garfield, all of these TV shows and movies about Garfield don't accurately portray the character that's in the comic strip because the character that's in the comic strip is not a character that's designed to be invested in anything. Okay. The whole point of the Garfield comic strip is that he is a lazy, lazy cat who just wants to sit in his bed, eat his lasagna, (laughs) maybe go out every once in a while, or at least stand by the door while John's trying to let him out. 
That's all he wants to do. So I don't think there's ever been an accurate portrayal of the comic strip of Garfield. Hmm. That's my idea. Okay. My idea, and this the 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 one part about this that you know the Netflixes and the ABCs and the Comedy Centrals of the world would immediately shut down this idea. Yes. Is for the title. Because I think the title of this show cannot have Garfield in it. Okay. It should just be John. J O N. That's the name of the show. What a John. stirring, stirring title that would be. <laughs> right? But I, I thought, how fun. You know, I, I, I tell Lori Beth, I love binging old TV shows. Yes. And I'm always binging a, an old TV show when, uh, you know, we're, we're talking. And right now, I'm currently in the middle of Maud. Yes. There's something that's so fun about that three camera setup where you're really in. Two or three rooms of this house at all times in yeah. almost every episode. That is my wheelhouse. Yeah. That's what I want to do. When I think about doing a sitcom, yeah. that's the kind I want to do. Yeah. I've watched easily 150 episodes of Maud, and 140 of them took place in that living room. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And that's what I feel like would be so perfect. And it lends itself so beautifully to this idea to have the show really just take place in the house with John and Garfield. And then other things come to the house that mm -hmm. happen, but it's all mostly happening to, to John, not to Garfield. Right. Yeah. And then you kind of get to mix up. So now. You get that kind of threes company, three camera sitcom, ah. but you also get a little bit of a mystery science theater spin because Garfield is constantly talking over gotcha. what's happening in the show. Gotcha, gotcha. You know that theory too, that fan theory that Garfield and Odie don't exist right. and that John is schizophrenic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that could be a weird... <laughs> is it or isn't it episode? It's a Halloween episode. Okay, I'm liking this. I don't right? think the the title John is. I mean, the original cartoon strip was called Garfield. No, yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, maybe it could be Garfield and John. Yeah, apostrophe and apostrophe. I guess I just would never want it to. Uh, you wouldn't be able to compare this to the Garfield yes, movie yes, yes. or the old Garfield TV show. Gotcha. This is such a different feel to this. Can we call it Arbuckle? Yeah, maybe. Okay, Arbuckle is uh, more intriguing. It's odd because Quentin actually made a little 20 minute. It was. It's almost like an independent movie version <laughs> of this idea where it's more about John than it is about yeah. Garfield. But in that 20 minute independent movie, Garfield talks once. Is this Garfield in Arbuckle, which yeah. we've now called it? Yes. Uh, CGI, live action? No, I don't think it needs to be CGI. I mean, there's a part of me. I know this is this is dumb old uh, old school. But what was the the show? The Sabrina the Teenage Witch yes. had the cat and the cat Salem would talk. the cat played by Nick Bakai. And it would be a puppet. Yes. You know, so but Garfield never talks. So you don't need mouth flap. Yeah. He only thinks. You, it's not like John ever hears anything That's that Garfield true. is saying. So it could just be a trained real cat that can just hit its marks. It could be. When you said, when you geared up to tell me that last thing you said yeah. about Salem, I really thought you were going to just be like, it's a big it's puppet, a big puppet. <laughs> and I'm underneath it. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know if Salem ever worked for me. This is the puppet yeah, yeah, cat. Yeah, yeah. It always kind of looked like a fake puppet cat. Well, I mean, in all fairness, there's it, no such thing as magic cat. And then half the time, it was true. a regular cat. Yeah, yeah. And only when he had to speak. To I love Nick Bakai. No, Nick yeah. Bakai uh, when comedy before comedy, comedy central, central was comedy central it was the comedy channel yep and there was uh night after night with alan havy a stand-up wow who was like a interview show it was a nighttime yeah. you know talk, talk show. show and nick bakai was the uh announcer okay nick bakai was the sidekick right, announcer the yeah but it was just a small studio i think in new york and they had the audience of one because oh. it's a small thing and there were just two chairs <laughs> and awesome. one person would like get the honor to come be in it that's great um and that's where i fell in love with nick bakai so when i did 
visit the set of Sabrina once. Yeah. I was very excited. Did to you Nick see Bakai. the puppet cats? I saw Nick Bakai. Yeah, but you didn't see the puppet cats. I, I didn't even ask. It uh, didn't occur to me. I'd want to see those puppet cats. So, okay, this was a whole aside yeah, yeah, about anyway. my love for Nick Bakai <laughs> and the comedy channel. <laughs> right. Um, so, okay, I so, like this. So, yeah. so is this then a little, a little bleaker? I think it would be, you know... I would love to bring that three camera setup and that three camera feel to modern television because there really isn't I know. much as far as three camera anymore. It. But you would have to temper it with more modern storytelling yeah. techniques and it would have to be a little bit bleaker and it would have to be a little dark. Yeah. Not in a gruesome bloody way but in like a this is a lonely loser who can't yeah. find anyone to love him oh so there's something that's kind of inherently funny about that yeah no no i know what you mean so yeah i think okay. that, that would be my idea it's arbuckle the sitcom mm -hmm. with a three camera setup with the whole show really just takes place in his house maybe a little bit outside yeah. here and there but for the most part you're all in the same room. There was. It's funny because he he talks about all of the other characters that have come in and out over the years. Mm -hmm. And I guess in the beginning of the comic strip, there was a another guy named Lyman that moved in with John. Whoa! And Odie is Lyman's puppy. <gasps> that's how that's how Odie comes to meet Garfield in the original comic. Is that? Lyman comes in to move in with John and he brings a puppy with him named Odie. You're blowing my mind. Isn't this crazy? All of this could be part of the show. It's the origin story. I know. Anyway, I okay. just thought this was such a fun idea. I like it. It's never been done and it's been done to death. You yes. know, and it's, uh, it's a kind of fun feeling. Anyway. Nice work. Thank you. I, th I thought that was like a really cool, fun way to go. Okay. But, uh, Thank you for letting me get that off my chest. Please, anytime. I, I, it gets stuck in my head and I, I go crazy. Anyway, our final question for today's podcast is from Chelsea. 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 And Chelsea says, hi, Lori Beth. My name is Chelsea. I'm currently away at a treatment center for alcohol abuse. Apparently, wine is not meant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Anywho... Your podcasts are helping me get through some tough days. I'm in a sticky situation right now. I seem to have fallen for my roommate here at the center. I'm not sure if it's lust because we are sharing the same room and not allowed to mingle with the guys. Or am I really falling for her? Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm also married with two children at home. I want to act on these feelings because we have a really great time together. I'm not gay. I've never been with a woman. Should I tell my husband or her? Every night we are just a few feet apart and I want to climb in her bed and just be with her. Please help. We only have three weeks left. That's Chelsea. Chelsea. Yep. Chelsea. Chelsea. You are not in a sticky situation because you might be in love with this woman. <laughs> you are in a sticky situation because you are detoxing and getting over alcohol yeah. which is ravaging you possibly physically yeah and your and, family and whatever is taking that place could be anything yeah. tv people uh cross addict to other drugs people cross addict all the time yeah. to relationships yeah 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 this is not true love yeah this is i mean the odds are infinitesimal yeah your sticky situation is having to feel your life without alcohol. Yeah. And having to admit or see or understand where that has taken you. Mm. I'm in rehab. I'm away from my family. Yep. I have a lot to think about. I have a lot to think about that I didn't want to think about, which is why I drank and drank and drank. That is the sticky situation. Yep. Professing your love to your roommate right. who also is in rehab. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Whose yeah, yeah, life yeah. wasn't going that great, allegedly, yeah, if yeah, she's yeah. there. Yep. Everyone's there to get help. And the help is to help you safely get off whatever you're addicted to 
and rebuild your life or mm. rethink your life. Right. If you've been drinking because you're married and have two kids, but you've been gay. Right. Then that if that's what's being discovered here, then that's what's being discovered here. Right. But it is not. I can almost 99.999% guarantee you it is not because you just magically met your roommate right. in rehab. And that happens to be the your soulmate. Yes. So I would advise not making a move. I would advise yeah. really stepping back and asking, I mean, I, Theoretically, or I would hope that if you're in rehab, you have a counselor, you have maybe if you're in 12 step, you have a sponsor, who knows. But there is so much that goes on when we get sober, yep. physically, mentally, emotionally, a shit ton of things hit us in the face. Yeah. And we're used to just self-medicating mm. to make that go away. I don't have my drugs anymore. You don't have your alcohol anymore. What are we going to use? Right. What are we going to use to, to not cope. deal with this, to cope? Yeah. And the answer is we're not going to get to the bottom of anything we really need to look at if we're just reaching out for the next thing. Right. This is this most, most possibly or most probably, I should say, is a distraction. Mm -hmm. This is a distraction. This is, you know, maybe the justification, like where it's like, you know, well, I ruined my life, but it got me here. Right. And this is, you know, how the long and winding road that led us here, that I found you in rehab, you know, no, 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 no. You know, there's a real, and this is what's really interesting though, Clark, is because um, I worked at, uh, the detox unit. Right. And there was also a big residential side. Right, right, right. And very strict women and men separate, mm. boys and girls. Mm. I mean, they're all of age. Sure, but sure, everyone sure. seems like a kid to me. Right. Um, with all that sobriety of the bill. <laughs> it is funny because they'd all I'd be like little bunnies, like I'd call them all my little nicknames. Yeah. And then there's like a 75-year-old guy, but he's like, I am your little bunny. <laughs> um, extraordinarily strict rules. Don't even look at someone of the opposite sex. Wow. Don't speak to them, pass a note. That is like get kicked out territory. Wow. But all the gay guys were together oh, and all the lesbians were together. Okay. So it's just this kind of like, and it's not like you want to be like, we will have a gay wing, <laughs> you know, exactly. or, but, but that always kind of cracked us up because it was like, oh yeah, we have a lot in common. Uh, we're both guys. We both loved meth and we both love dick <laughs> roommates. Um, so that was always this kind of funny thing, but I mean, or horrible if they didn't get sober. Right. But, um, or stay sober. Yeah, so, yeah. but Chelsea, I am really telling you with all my heart and my experience, yeah. personal experience from me, 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 yeah. and any experience I've had with addicts in detox and rehab, you are not in love with this woman. Mm. You are in love with having something to distract you yeah. from facing all of this hard hard shit yeah. that you're being faced with now that you are sober off alcohol. There's people we get sober with yeah. that you have a bond with like crazy. Yeah. And if there's chemistry, it could be chemistry as a friend. It could be, it could be the love of your life. Yeah. I really, really, really <laughs> Doubt it. don't think it is. Yeah. Um, and what if, if this is, if, if, I, I'm just trying to think from a person that thinks she's falling in love's yes, point of yes, view. Yes, yes, yes. No, I know what you're saying. The thought of just like shutting off this person now, especially if she's still living in the same room, yeah. is scary. I feel like if she wanted to think to herself, okay, I, I can't do anything now, but if I want to keep their friendship, I can keep the friendship. I could keep talking to her. And then a year or two from now, I could re-examine and check it out for myself. No, absolutely. Okay. What needs to be my main priority is uh, protecting my sobriety. Yes. So, and this is me 15 and a half years in. Yeah. So, and it's not a constant daily struggle. It's not, but it is there. Yeah. Sometimes it is there. Yeah. And 
that Chelsea needs to be your first priority now. Yeah. And the idea, I mean, you've reached out to me for help, which I is awesome. Yeah. I wish I was right there to kind of slap you <laughs> and tell you, and, and I'll look at your roommate and be like, she's not that hot. We need to, we need to send Chelsea an early version of this episode. Yeah. So she doesn't have to wait another few days. Know. Um, you know, the connection very well might be there. Yeah. The connection of someone who absolutely understands what you're going through. Yes. You're literally going through the same thing at the same time. Yep. And there are people in a rehab or a detox that click and there are people that do not. Right. And this is such a kinship for a million reasons other than you found the love of your life. Right. You already are married. You have two kids. Yeah, two kids. Two kids. You have a life that went off the rails, presumably, because of alcohol. Right, because she was drinking wine, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, and you're. it's like, yeah, that's a funny joke, but you're drinking wine all day because you don't want to look at your life or feel with or deal with whatever you want to, you know, Deal just with. forget about, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, and if that's your husband for some reason in your marriage, figure that out. Yep. This woman is new in sobriety too. Yeah. This woman is going through the same things you are. Yep, yep. She has her life and her history coming to this and you pursuing this could hurt her. Right. Damage her path. It could damage her path. It could freak her out. It could a lot of things. And if you can focus right now on what you need to do to stay sober, on why you drink, hopefully, hopefully getting help from wherever you can, Yep. you know, instead of just cross addicting to something else to distract you, mm -hmm. um, that is the way to go. Yep. I agree. Hiya, Deal Smeo. Please write us back. Yeah, that's a that was a deep one. But and uh, if I was really, really wrong <laughs> and you end up leaving your husband and your kids are your cool life. with it, I will for free officiate your gay wedding. <laughs> oh, there you go. What a one what a, gay wedding if I'm wrong. That's a fantastic way to settle that. All right. I love that. That's great. Uh, hopefully that helps, Chelsea. Please, please let us know how it went and what I happened. I had a little soapbox going. I know. That was great. Uh, <laughs> but we're all done. That was it. Oh. That was the last question of the day. Okay. I, I was uh, I was very uh, sad that we had to end because that was fun. I know. Three more questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you love our show and you, uh, you just need to send us questions, we need questions. So if you have a good one. Please, especially if it's about Facebook stalking. Oh, my God. Help oh me my out. God, Let please. me know what you've done so I feel better about myself. Send it to us at AskLoriBeth.com. You can follow us on all the socials at AskLoriBeth. Or you could just leave us a message with your name and where you're from at 1-855-336-2374. That's 1-855-DENBERG or... 1855 Denberg. That's my name. That's your name. And you can find me at LB Denberg on Instagram, at Lori Beth Denberg on Twitter, and there's a Lori Beth Denberg fan page on Facebook. That's right. So yeah, follow us on the socials because we get, I notice when I post stuff, a lot of you guys talk to each other. Yeah. And I, it'd be really cool if we could turn our Twitter or Instagram into a community. Yeah, I'd love that. Um, That would be just like kind of a super cool dealio. Yeah. So if even if you wanted to just post a, a question to the group. Yeah. You could post a big question to us. Everyone could get could uh, answer it. Um, hashtag one million hugs. Oh, right, right, we right. We know what that's about. If yep. you don't, I'm forcing you to listen to previous episodes. Yep. Hashtag one million hugs. We all know what that means. Yeah. And uh, please share the podcast. Leave us a review or a whatever. Yay. It makes it seem legit and like <laughs> people like me, which is all this is about. Right. Um, and you can uh, book me for a personalized video Mother's Day is coming up. Ooh, yeah. So you can do that at cameo.com slash Lori Beth. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Please subscribe to the podcast and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye, kitty cats. Bye.
That advice stars Lori Beth Denberg and Clark Crozier. The show is produced by me, Jeremy Balin, and part of the Seltzer Kings Network. Our theme song is written and performed by Natty Ward. If you or someone you love is in need of some bad advice, you can submit your own question on our socials, all of which are Ask Lori Beth, or on our website at AskLoriBeth.com, or for a nostalgic twist, you can call 1-855-DENBERG. That's right, 1-855-336-2374, and leave your question there. Thanks for listening.